So let's get started for today. I want to do a mouth tutorial today. A lot of the response was positive for the reel that I sent on Instagram and it seems like you guys really want a, a new fresh breakdown on some of the things I covered uh, in that reel which is just cylinders, how to build from scratch a believable mouth and I don't think I've ever done a proper dedicated uh, recent like modernized video of that and this is for everyone people who use procreate people who sketch uh, traditionally people who paint um, uh, traditionally this fundamental knowledge I'm about to cover is applicable to all media types why because it doesn't it doesn't rely on tricks of any specific type of medium so it's not like reliant on a certain uh, dodge tool or a certain uh, procreate only brush or something that you can only do uh, traditionally. It's actually pretty uh, universal. All of the fundamentals I'm about to cover and it's super easy to follow. Uh, but before I get started, if you want your work critiqued, if you have requests, you can join on my community and you can talk to me directly through Discord. Um, so if you join my Discord community right here, this will uh, take you to my Discord. So go to istabrak.com and click on the community tab and that'll take you to my Discord. Or click on this icon, the subreddit icon, and that'll take you to my subreddit. The subreddit has a challenge at the top, pinned at the top, and this challenge, if you win it, you win two hours, up to two hours with me of portfolio tutoring, a portfolio review and tutoring, and you win my masterclass, you win Portrait Studio, you win everything that I can offer you, my brushes, all of it. So please consider reading through this. You just have to design and draw the character that I describe in this narrative, and the winners aren't picked off a uh, skill level. They're picked based off off their, 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 their efforts, what they put in, the thumbnails, the research, the, 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 the back and forth with the critiquing, their participation in the community. That's how uh, the, the, the winners qualify. And if time allows, they join me on a call for a video that I post up here if they're comfortable with that. <clears throat> So let's get started how to draw mouths. It's actually the easiest feature to draw, but it comes hand in hand with one of the most important forms that you can possibly learn. So I've talked a lot about studying the sphere. The sphere is just a very straightforward, but it contains all kinds of secrets. This, this super heavy duty shape that is the mother of all shapes, but it's also not really strictly responsible for why everything looks realistic in, let's say, anatomy or something like that. Not everything has a base shape or a native shape or geometric anatomy, as I like to call it, uh, of a sphere. Some, thi uh, some things have cylinders, some things have a cylindrical base. So this is a basic sphere, and the reason we have to study the sphere is because we, in the sphere, learn the very first appreciation, the very first lesson on the importance of the core shadow. The sphere has a wonderful way of showing us how important that core shadow is. So full black, low opacity means that I'm doing radial shading and I'm building up the value in slivers. Okay, so now we have a sphere. It's believable. It's there. It's beautiful. But what about the cylinder? So the cylinder, it's very basic. It's like a, it's the silhouette of a rectangular prism. Oopsie. Okay just like that but it's got a sphere like contour to it so from front view the cylinder looks like this basically um oopsie all right so it looks like this and then we've got the core shadows so we've got full black low opacity and then i'm shrinking my brush as i'm adding more paint as we get the cylinder same thing with the white full white low opacity all right, and you can make the, the fatter part towards the top center. You can make it all at the top. It, it just depends on where the light and what is and what the light is doing. So again, a cylinder and a sphere, the reason why we say cylinder and sphere instead of circle and 
rectangle is because of the diagram equivalent of all of this, which is, of course, the sketch of the sphere. It's three-dimensional. There's a z-axis here, this z-axis. There's the x-axis, there's the y-axis, and there's the z-axis. So same exact thing uh, for the cylinder. We've got, there's the z-axis right here. There's the x-axis, which is perfectly parallel to the base of the canvas, in this case for this sketch, and there's the y-axis. So it's a three-dimensional object. It's a tube, a hamster can travel through it. Um, so when we think of mouths, what does this have to do with a mouth? So if you think of lips, you guys must start thinking of the cylinder. Because the lips, the way they just are, that's just it. That's just how they're made by nature. They have a very cushiony, pillowy kind of structure to them. Um, and they have a, it's very cylindrical, very obvious from the side view. The lips do something like that. They have a very sticky outy nature to them, right? So when you want to render a lip, you fail sometimes because you are too busy thinking about this drawing of a mouth or a lip, right? You're using the line to guide you. So this line has corrupted your mind. It's corrupted your memory of what a mouth looks like. Um, so you end up uh, using the line to shade. And so you end up just working with the line instead. I'm here to tell you, you can do both. Um, and eventually you'll just shake off this line because if you were to draw natural lips that are feminine, uh, you know, apart from the masculine lips, which run more thin, uh, but there are some men who have thicker lips or fuller lips. But if you were to draw some very simple, general, basic beauty template lips, you can, um, sketch it out first, but eventually these lines just have to be shed. So how do we use all of this mumbo jumbo? How do we use all of this uh, to render a pair of lips? Sometimes there are artists who render right away. They just go right in and they just start rendering. But for me, I'm trying to hack your brain. I'm trying to work with your brain and I'm trying to hack the way your brain works. Again, this is my like mandatory um, uh, cut like, uh, uh, important, uh, uh, PSA. Your brain is not your enemy. Your brain is your friend. It's constantly trying to help you and work with you and do the thing you asked it to do. It's literally your slave. Uh, I believe the mind and the brain are two separate things and your brain is just trying to help you and you, you don't provide it with what it needs. Sometimes you have the will, not your brain. So if you sit there and try to deconstruct, really sit there, and work out why lips look the way they do in a realistic setting and lighting, your brain will try to remember that. And the way you hack the brain is with this diagramming, with these shapes. So I want to work with your brain as well. I know there's symbols inside your skull. I know there's symbols inside your brain right now. So let's, let's do something where we are um, working with your brain. Okay, so I want to not get rid of any of this. I want to just throw it up there. Um, and let's just draw a very basic set of lips. We want to work with your brain, so that means I'm going to be sketching it out first. And it's a front view lip. All right. So the reason why we add in the Cupid's bow, it's because it's a standard template. The reason why we add in <clears throat> these two edges is because all lips have a point where the flesh kind of jumbles up in here as kind of like a dimple uh, right at the edge of the lip not an actual dimpling on either side of the lip a dimple right at the edge of the lip i call that the dark spot because it's one of the darkest points of the lips because that's where we get get that cave like leftover of the openness of the mouth we're going to place in one little fold to represent the edge line of the lower lip and then we're going to add in another little cupid's bow fold or, or, or edge right here and we're going to stop it right here we're not going to try to draw the cupid's bow we are also as you can see not drawing the edge of the lips this is for a very big reason this edge or this line right here 
is used right now to represent an edge, an actual edge. One lip is separate from the other. This mouth can open and the lips can separate. They're two different objects. This is an overlap edge, one of the strongest edges. One object is in front of the other, okay? If you set yourself up for failure and sabotage your life and go and add in the edges of the mouth, you are going to give yourself a hard time later because your brain, while it's rendering, will assume this edge is as important as this edge. It is not. It is not as important as that edge. This is an overlap edge. This is almost like a theoretical edge. It's not really there. There's no edge there in real life. You run your hands over the, your mouth. This is a skin transition. This is not an overlap edge. This could be an angle edge where two objects are facing different directions, most definitely, but it's not an overlap edge at all. This and this are beside each other. So don't throw those two edges in there, those two lines to represent that edge. So before we start rendering, a line equals equals an edge, okay? All right, this is how we start slowly, gradually replacing our line dependence with form knowledge. So we have our sketch in a new layer. I, right underneath this, I'm going to just get my blocking brush. And I'm just gonna give this set of lips a basic mid-tone. This mid-tone is based off the complexion of the character that you're painting. It could be darker, it could be lighter. Um, uh, it's really up to you. And then I'm going to get a slightly darker value, nothing too crazy. And I'm going to designate the upper lip as darker than the lower lip. Okay. By nature, just because it looks down, so it's looking down and away from the light, the light's coming this way, that lip is like looking away from the light. And remember the secret is imagine the light has an eye and based off what it can see and what it can't see, it illuminates. If it can't see the lower part of the lip, which I don't think it can, it can't illuminate it. Um, so just imagine that the light source has an eye on it. There's also the lower part. Usually you guys stop here and then you just overwork this lip so much because you want more contrast. So usually you guys stop right here, you start rendering, you start, you start blending or rendering quote unquote, and that's usually where you guys leave off. Stop, before you start doing all this, you have a couple more steps. Okay, the first step is your overlay diagram. This is where you can start hacking your brain. So you're going to straight up draw a bunch of hoops that slowly turn into a cylinder. Okay. And you're going to draw two of those cylinders stacked on top of each other. Let's look at them from three quarter view. Cylinder one, cylinder two, and they're both over each other. This is called geometric anatomy. You take the anatomy and you find the geometric equivalent of it to help your brain understand what it's about to draw or else the brain might, brain might panic or else the brain might panic and end up relying too much on lines. Lines are what the brain goes to when it has no other choice, when it's cornered, when it, fe when it freaks out because you're asking it for a picture and it doesn't have one to give you so all it can give you is a symbol. So right now we have these overlay lines. So before we continue, we are switching our brain. We're switching gears. Like you switch gears in a car, we're switching from subject, which is lips, to object, which is cylinder. Okay, right now we're switching gears. So let's render two cylinders exactly where we had those two lips. All right, so in a new layer, I'm drawing over the set of lips. I am going to draw two squares on top of each other, just like I did earlier. Okay, so actually I'll just do two rectangles, sorry, not two squares. And I'm going to just do that. And I'm gonna extend them a little bit out. Okay, so the first one is going to get the basic highlights any God-fearing cylinder will get. So it's going to get a very simple upper half highlight. So meaning that the cylinder 
gets that highlight at the top. It's also going to get a bit of a shadow on the bottom. Oops, okay, so I didn't lock the layer. That's fine. So it's going to get a highlight at the top, a shadow at the bottom, done with the feathered edges of my soft brush because cylinders, spheres, all those curvy base shapes, they like the soft brush and the soft brush likes them because they have many, many curved points and the soft brush and curves go hand in hand. A round tool for a round object. I'm going to do the same exact thing for the bottom lip. Okay, and exactly the same concept. The top lip gets highlights. Okay, see those sketch lines underneath? You can even turn those off if you don't want to see them. And shadow lines underneath. So now we have these two hilarious looking cylinders, but they make everything better. Next, I'm going to merge these two layers together. The reason I'm doing this in layers and merging separately, and I'm going to about to use uh, I'm about to use liquify. The reason why I'm doing all this this way is so that you can see that it's not that hard to tell your brain it needs to start focusing on the form, so that your brain doesn't see it as a complete and total change in its way of functioning. It's just you're adding on to the knowledge it already contains. So right now what I'm doing, can you tell what I'm doing? I'm changing the shape of these cylinders to take the shape of a, of a mouth. Now, do you remember that little thing I drew? Subject to object. Now object is turning back into subject. Look at that. Do you see this? Have you heard about this? Are you guys seeing this? Um, so we have turned the cylinders, which were just two basic things, into a subject. What does that mean? That means that we now have a set of lips. So if we go back to our sketch, and I'm trying to just basically match the sketch. Obviously, this isn't how I draw because I know how to draw lips, but this is how you're gonna draw for a little while until you perfect lips. Um, because it's it's uh, it, 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 it does seem like you have to kind of work with the lines and match the edges of the of the sketch lines but you'll be able to do that because you won't have to liquefy and draw the cylinder and lecture like I am you can just go right into it so you see what's happening we didn't have to change the renderings or the the core shadows we added to the cylinder we just had to change the shape of the cylinder look at that that's what rendering is and notice one more thing there's no line it's just the edge so if we were to turn off this sketch line and basically just ignore what we drew earlier for that sketch line so basically um, as if we just had a base tone or a mid tone we are done drawing the lips that's it, it's over. So all you have to do now is just obviously start going closer and closer to subject. Right here, subject to object, you have to start slowly going back to subject, meaning that you're gonna blend it until it looks more and more like a set of lips. So if you've ever wondered how to make your drawings more realistic, this is how you do it. Obviously, I've reverse engineered this because I want to hack your brains. I want to show your brains it's not that hard to start moving closer to realism. So I'm just blending. You can blend in the way you like to blend. I'm going to blend this way. And we are missing two things, which I mentioned earlier. But again, this is a reverse engineered way of painting the mouth. This is for the sake of your brain. You, you, you may feel like you're just watching any old tutorial, but your brain right now is freaking out over this because something's getting unlocked. There's like this unlocking sound and you're in this dungeon and you just heard a, the door open or a latch open and some gears moving and that's happening in your brain as we're speaking. Um, something is happening in the way you are seeing objects from now on, the way you see form, and, uh, and I promise it's going to change the way you draw forever. So I'm going to add those two dark spots wherever I feel like they need to go. And I'm going to get my soft brush, 
and I'm going to go to full black, low opacity, and I'm going to slowly work my way into the corner of the lips that I just designated with those little dash lines. So brush stroke number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. If I were to map out the brush strokes as I add them in, in their low opacity brush, they kind of look like this. Brush stroke number one, number two, number three, number four, until I get to the deepest part. That eventually makes the lips look like they've got muscles, they've got all kinds of stuff going on. All right, and I'm just feathering that out. It's your choice how you want to smudge, how you want to blend. Just kind of blend it all together so we don't see any sharp edges. Do not blend under here. Do not blend this line. Blend above. Blend all this extra stuff. Don't blend this area. Okay, so it's, it may look like a mess. It may be something you've never drawn before. It may be so backwards to the way you usually think because you usually sketch something first. And again, you could, if you wanted to, sketch this first. I mean, this is something you have the option to do. Um, but I just want to show you that there are other options that you have. So now what I'm going to do is just all the usual stuff I would have done had I just started the lips organically. So I just darken the up, upper lip just a little bit more. Okay, and sometimes I'll add in the shadow or the block, the cast shadow block. I sometimes also add in the coarse shadow of the chin. Already from a distance, it's looking great because the navigator does not lie. The navigator is showing you the future. The navigator is showing you a future look into all of your blocks. Are they working? I'm going to get a highlighter block for the cupid's bow remember how i didn't draw the cupid's bow because you don't need to draw an edge that isn't there and this is going to get blended out in a second and then i'm going to draw or block in block in means i'm just using my blocking brush it's my set on my website and i'm just blocking the upper part of the lips because the upper part of the lips they kind of stick out you know right under your nose they kind of just catch some light so you can't just leave it there without any light all right, and then I'm just going to add a couple more shadows here and there. All right, and then yep, it's looking messy and that's fine. Don't freak out. Don't start using lines. Don't start using contrast. Just don't freak out. I'm going to now in a new layer, I'm going to just radially, full black, low opacity, start just tracing the edge of that lip that is over the top lip over the bottom lip until I get this kind of black line, but it bled over everything. You can keep it because it kind of looks like a cast shadow. Do you see how it's kind of reading as the cast shadow of the upper lip? We do need one, or you can add it in later. You see how it's working as like this extra bit of shadow. You can add it in later. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to add it in later uh, just because I don't want to do um, that just yet. I want to blend the rest of the mouth until I'm ready. And then I'm going to add it in as one nice clean cast shadow. Then down here back to this, I am going to blend. I'm going to blend, blend, blend. A well, an over blended lip is a well rendered lip. Write that back to me because the more you blend, the more you represent that that's fat in here. There's no bone in the lip flesh. It's just the teeth behind the lips inside the mouth, but it's not like the nose or we have a bone substructure and cartilage. It's not like the eyes or we have whatever is made up of the eyeball cartilage. I don't know. And the bone structure of the eye socket. It's not like that. It's just strictly skin muscles and fat. That's it. That's all the lip, maybe a little bit of cartilage. I'm sure there's something in there like that. Um, but uh, that's all that we really care about right now is the fact that we need to blend, blend, blend. I'm not talking about blending away the obvious edges. We don't want to blend away what's left over of those two cylinders we added before. Those two cylinders, the edge between them was there for a reason. Don't blend this edge, but blend everything outside of it. Yep, blend here, blend the lower half of the of the of the lower lip, blend this if you want to as well since it's not really that much of an overlap edge. The lower part of the lip doesn't really overlap that much. There is a bit of a kind of like a shadow here, um, but it's not that sharp. It's not that kind of overlap edge. And I'm continuously blending the outside. Look at my blending strength though. Don't go crazy. It's when I say blend, I mean within the realm of 
blendable in the world of art. What does blending mean? It means like this very um, uh, proportionate unison of two edges together, not the deletion of those two surfaces, but just the having them incorporate together or connecting them. And my smudge brush leaves behind some like painterly, a painterly touch to it, which I really like. Um, I think I over blended a little bit. So you see those two dimples left behind from the cylinder. I like to keep those actually. So I just added a little bit extra here. All right. And then now I'm going to bring back that shadow from earlier. I want to bring it in. It's time for it. And I'm going to merge it down. And with my soft brush, I'm going to just blend around the, um, the mouth. So I'm just using that standard um, alt kind of just blending with the soft brush edges. The reason why I'm using it for the chin is because females are generally more softer transitions in their in their bone structure than males. They generally have more soft transitions. Um, so I'm using more soft brush on a female face. If it was a male face, I'd probably use smudge brush and blocking because it preserves some of the angularity of a male face. Okay, and then I'm just blending away, making sure that the chin shadow respects the light source. I'm going to bring in a couple of little uh, uh, dark patches here at the top. Every lip is different, but sometimes you get these little dark patches at the top of the lip. I'm going to bring in that little bump that catches the light just there. And now I'm going to bring in that little white outline we sometimes get around the lips. And it hangs out just at the edge of the cupid's bow, just there. And it kind of outlines the mouth. And it's a change of skin texture. It's not always there. It's not always necessary. Not everybody has it. But there is always going to be that change in skin texture between face skin and lip skin that is started by, heralded by that edge of brightness or change in skin texture. Then I'm going to think back to my cylinder and I'm going to try to continuously preserve that volume of the lower lip. I'm, I'm kind of adding highlights now because it's later in the process. And I'm slowly radially building up. Remember, first brush, second brush, third brush that keeps shrinking until that lip starts to feel like it has volume. And I'm going to add a little bit of extra brightness on the edge of the lip under each dark spot. And that's just the hydration and the saliva sort of that comes out of those edges. It's very natural. It's just you would feel very dry if you didn't have wet eyes and a wet mouth cavity. It's just part of feeling and looking healthy, looking hydrated and moisturized. And I'm just blending and kind of really as, as artistically as possible, I guess, connecting some blending edges together. And trying to control the contrast. All this started just because we had really good cylinders and I'll take you through the whole step again. And I'm making sure the top half of this lip is, is still brighter than the lower half. All right, and then I'm just going to, I'm using my stronger smudge brush, my number five. And I'm just going over everything with like this feathering, this softness to complete that look. So this is a very rushed pair of lips. Um, so obviously there's going to be a time when you have uh, uh, more time to render, more time to take breaks, come back, find any more banding, clean that up. But this is pretty much all you really have to start doing to change the way your art looks permanently. So I'm just adding any extra stuff my visual instinct is telling me to add. Anything else I feel like I might have missed. Any highlights for the top here. There is the cash out of the nose, which I don't wanna mess with too much. And then the highlights for the chin again first brush second brush third brush fourth brush shrinking as it goes down and it creates this very three-dimensional look i'm keeping the shadow of that lip kind of sharp because that's the cast shadow of the lower lip 
And now with my pencil brush, I want to add a little bit of a more, a less clean line for the edge here. So I'm using a line. One of the only lines you can draw in the face is the lip line, which is right here. And you may, if you want to, blend some of this overlap edge, as long as it's not all of the overlap edge. So just here and here, just on these two edges. Sometimes in my art, I blend it all the way because all you really need is those two those three corners. Some artists do blend all of that. Um, so it's really up to you how you want. It's it's about um, uh, being stylistic with the fundamentals. The fundamentals are intact, but there's a bit of stylization. So it's really up to you. But uh, for now, if you're a beginner, um, just don't do any fancy little blending tricks. Just do what, you're, what you, what you um, saw me do today. Um, stick to that for a little bit. Practice it. Draw 10 lips in two weeks and you are going to become a completely different artist because you told your brain, hey, we are allowed to use geometric shapes to start off to kickstart the rendering process. And that's what ends up making everything look realistic. Then with my sketching brush or my soft brush, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to add in two very gentle lines for very thick brush, very light gray value for the cupid's bow. Do not overwork the cupid's bow. An overworked cupid's bow just looks weird in a drawing. Unless you're characterizing, unless the character is supposed to look a bit distinguished in that way. For now, just for the sake of your skill building and habit building, please don't overwork the cupid's bow. You, you don't need it. It's not that important. It doesn't have actual edge. It doesn't have um, full-on overlap edge. It's actually a very delicate, mild change in surface area. Um, angle. It's it's not that important. You guys are so excited to draw your cupid's bows. You guys always overline them and it's one of the areas that you guys end up over outlining or outlining or just turning into a full-on line in your rendering. So I just want to show you, you, you need more this highlight of the center or top center of the cupid's bow than you need anything else. So this is a very general set of lips. There are different types of lips in the world. I'm just raising this highlight up a little bit, adding a couple more little fancy highlights here and there. Um, but this is just one of the many types of uh, lips and mouths you have in the world. There's so much more variety. Uh, once you're done learning how to draw lips in this way, you start moving into references. You're going to now have the cylindrical instinct and knowledge for the cylinder, um, knowledge of the cylinder and instinct for the cylinder, sorry, to be able to see it in a reference. You'll be able to read references better. Uh, learning geometric anatomy helps you read references better. Write that back to me. By the way, when I say write that back to me, for anyone watching on YouTube, uh, that's me talking to my live stream uh, uh, guests, uh, the students listening to, listening to the live stream right now. So I'm just blending some more. And again, you can never stop blending. You can't blend enough. You already have the edge of the two lips overlapping. The rest is all blended. Please do not over edge the lips, it, then they start looking weird. Um, there are uh, things you can do when you have lips that are darker, for instance, lips that have makeup on. So I'm just, I'm just gonna go to multiply with black and I'm going to get soft brush and I'm just gonna show you what the equivalent is of having lipstick on. That's it, it's this, you just darken the lip. Even if it's a, a lipstick that is like a brighter um, uh, color, it's going to read as darker than the current skin tone or else you're not really wearing makeup, right? Or else you're just wearing something that's kind of nude and it's kind of a no makeup makeup look. Uh, but if you do have to have lips that are that have that makeup in them, especially lipstick that has a gloss, you just delete away at whatever is shining and you just add that on top. At that point, because it's pigment, you are allowed to have an edge on the upper lip. Um, so that that's really what the, the only exception to the rule. Um, and it, it just depends on the kind of lips you're drawing. So some lips have really, really sharp, sharp edges. It just depends on the trend of, of makeup that you're trying to depict for your character. And I'm just continuously blending, trying to form this in the cleanest way and again just with my soft brush jumping between soft brush and smudge brush just seeing what the navigator tells me I need to do maybe a little bit of highlight on that lip bleeding down on that corner there sorry 
and um, just a bit more of that fuzziness on the lip overlap and then sharpening the shadow for that lower lip as it overlaps the rest sometimes the shadow is quite dark it just depends on how where the light is Sometimes the light isn't directly 45 degrees over the face. Sometimes the light is um, hitting the face head on, and so you don't really have much of a shadow. Always ask the question, where is the light source coming from? That should have been the thing I said at the start. Uh, and that's a given if you watch my channel. Always ask, where is the light source coming from? That's question number one. Sometimes the banding of the highlight happens on either side of the lip, so just um, of the lower lip. Usually most of the highlight happens on the lip. As for the contrast that you see here, I want to show you one more time how um, unnecessary contrast is. Uh, so on a lightened layer, sorry, um, I'm going to, so lighten layer, layer on lighten mode, I'm going to just throw mid-tone over this entire set of lips. And I'm only going to delete where I know I have to, have to, have to have shadow. So the corners of the lips and some of the lower lip, sorry, some of the lower half of the upper lip and the shadow overlap of those two lips. Even that doesn't have to be that dark. And these lips still look very natural. Do you see that? So the contrast of all of this, the contrast of it all, Contrast does can be left behind. Write that back to me. Okay, so this is just without any extra, extra contrast. This is with the minimal most amount of contrast. And we still have a very nice set of lips. We still have a very nice drawing of lips. Why? Because the edge is working over time. The edge is doing all that work. If we got rid of the edge, and we got rid of some of the highlights, we really would lose the lip at this point. But we still have that edge, and that edge has preserved the presence of the cylinders. This all started because we had cylinders. Okay, so let's find those cylinders that I had at the start of the drawing. Remember those? This became this very, very easily. And it's all within, what, 42 minutes of this class. Um, so just give form a chance. Give that structure of the cylinder a chance. How do you start? How do you start doing this? If this is your very, very first time drawing uh, anything, um, you need to not go straight into the lips as a subject. You need to do some form studies. Form studies are like this really, really um, uh, straightforward way of getting to the to the point. <laughs> form studies, they, they it's like a crash course to everything you need to do to hack your brain into seeing the z-axis, the form and everything. So what is a form study? The studying of blobs, spheres, cylinders, all in open space. So for homework, you have homework. You're going to get the freehand lasso tool and you're gonna, you're gonna render a bunch of little beans floating in space. You're gonna render a bunch of cylinders floating in space. You're gonna use the lasso tool just like I am right now and you are going to just start rendering them. Oopsie. Okay, and you're going to fill it in and you're just going to right click, deselect, lock the layer. You're going to practice with your with your radial shading, full black, low opacity, and you're going to start rendering a million little spheres and cylinders floating around in space. This is the first step to becoming a better artist. Um, you are looking at the core shadow, practicing the technique of radial shading, relying on this edge, this guy, this beautiful thing that is the reason why we have realism in the 2D world of drawing. The 2D world of drawing owes everything to this little guy, this edge. Um, so start practicing your forms. These little objects can turn into a full subject one day. This lip, this set of lips is all, is all accredited to this cylinder and what we did today with the cylinder.
please do the homework. And if you guys have any requests, so this is the, the, the how to draw lips for today. Next time will be how to draw noses, and that'll be Tuesday next week, or maybe next week in general. Um, I wanted to start updating my tutorials on my website and on my uh, on my channel. I want to start updating the tutorials because I feel like they're a bit outdated, the ones that I do have on my channel right now. And I obviously uh, I get better and better at teaching every year that I teach. Um, so I wanted to just keep uh, growing that library for you guys in case I die one day and no one is there <laughs> to teach you guys how to draw lips anymore. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. That was toxic of me. Um, just one more little shadow down here. So yeah, if you guys like the homework idea, you have homework. And if you want to post your drawings of lips and your paintings of lips, all you have to do is go to isabrak.com, click on this subreddit icon right here, and the lips you drew after today's tutorial, please upload them here and I'll critique them on a critique hour. And um, getting critique is, is really important for improving. So please go here, go to isterbrack.com and click on the subreddit icon and draw some lips, render some lips, see what happens. Next time will be about noses. If you guys want to go ahead and render some noses, you can. I am going to take a look at this drawing of lips here just to show you uh, where the issues are with it and really really quickly I'm just going to critique this so this cupid's bow is bleeding into as we saw already the cupid's bow does not need to be overworked uh, so she is wearing lipstick so I can't mess with that too much but what's happening is we're not showing that the lips and the skin are hit, hit by the same light this is in color um, so it might confuse you just a little bit. Color is the next level up. All my students in my private tutoring, they don't do color until they are 100% good and clean with their gray values. Uh, just because color kind of throws a wrench in all, all your developments. So, uh, but remember this is in color. So I'm just using the light color to hit that uh, orange that you've got going there, just to bring that down a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to blend out some of these edges that you have here. Because again, if you're not going to blend the edge of the lip, you still have to blend the chin as it connects into the, the, the mouth and the skin and all of that. And in a new layer, I'm just going to capture this value, darken it, redden it, and redden it by cooling it. And I'm going to try to develop that corner of the lips which has almost no muscle structure remember that little trick full black low opacity that's really going to help us create the feeling that there's muscle structure here this is in a new layer so we still have to delete and we can because we did it in a new layer we have to delete wherever that lip kind of catches the light okay and then we're just continuing the sculpting of that lip see that that's what was missing in this set of lips and then i'm just going to try to use that blush color that you have here this orangey color right in there in that corner just to color correct and again in a new layer i'm trying to develop the dark value of that lower lip because it needs to connect and, and be a part of the face again. The lip kind of feels like it's floating over. And I'm putting this on darken. Okay, so the lip cylinder exists way outside of the lip edge, but you kind of didn't really remember that. You don't really do that. So we're using this skin slash light color right here to make this work to actually build the structure of the cylinders of the two lips. So it's the cylinders that were missing. You had some highlights, you overworked the cupid's bow, and that's why at the end it really didn't feel like a very realistic lip. And again, just blending as much as I can. So this piece was submitted through the subreddit that I showed you just now. Um, so if you want to get your work critiqued, just like this artist is, submit it into the subreddit and it'll make it into one of my videos. So for the color of the red that you used, I think it's just a little bit too orange. It doesn't feel realistic. So I'm just going to color correct that red really quickly. 
oops, just so it matches the skin tone. And then I'm going to darken that upper lip a little bit. So color corrected and now on a darkened layer, maybe multiply might work better. I'm darkening that top lip, sorry, and I'm darkening it mostly on the corners of the mouth. Because the light is really getting rejected there. And I'm lightening it around like the top half of the cylinder of the top lip, just like that. Okay, so it's giving us this nice rejection of the light. And then I'm going to merge down. And that same color that I just located, I'm going to use for the lower half of the lower lip and then blending those two together. So now it's the cylinder on the inside outline of the lips. Just remember these lips today are actually uh, have makeup. So some of the stuff I showed you has to do with a nude lip or a natural lip. And I'm just trying to clean up that edge here since it's a makeup edge. And because makeup sometimes has these transitions, that top half is going to get, of the lower lip, is going to get a bit more shadow. But mostly the reason why this is going to look more realistic is because we strengthen the muscles of the lips on the outside of the mouth. It's not just about the inside of the mouth. Okay. And so I'm just uh, using some of that same red, that exact same red, on um, actually, yes, keeping it on darken. And I'm going to use that on the corners of the mouth to help mix those two colors together. And I'm trying to show the cylinder of that lower lip continuously fighting for that cylinder, always ready to remember the cylinder. Remember if I've painted it away, all of that. And then I'm going to delete all those dark points at the point where the light I feel is really catching those areas. Okay, so lots of structure. And then I'm gonna get the darkest, darkest, um, and also coolest red, and I'm gonna use it in the black. Those dark spots here that were the black spots in grayscale are now the red or darkish blush spots or, or shadow spots. So we're bringing in contrast, but very cautiously. And then for the lower part of the lip. And then using pure white on some of these areas. So I think this entire mouth, uh, this face actually, is just too, um, too bright. So I'm going to put it on darken and I'm going to just be very selective with where I delete now. So this is a new layer and I'm just being very selective with exactly where I delete because I think you had too much contrast and expo exposure um, in this illustration. Zooming out because it works like as a navigator and I'm slowly building up, meaning I'm slowly deleting away at what I feel like is the brightest, brightest point. You see how it was just a bit too much brightness and now we're much more selective with where we have brightness. Just like so, and then merge down and a couple more changes. I'm just going to burn the edges of the mouth just because that lipstick rejects light more and more as it reaches the edges, but I don't want it to burn everything around. So I go backward and um, I delete away at what I feel like I don't need. Okay, and that's it for today. I'll show you guys the before and after. I hope today's tutorial helped you out. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe and share this really important. I'm trying to get my channel 
to, 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 you know, I'm trying to bring it out of the shadows, out of the bog of whatever has been happening. Um, so please help me out by subscribing, by sharing, by talking about my channel as much as you can um, to anybody who might need these tutorials. So before, okay, so you see it was kind of orange. The orange really didn't match the skin tone. It was a very uh, pale skin tone. So pale skin tone matches more purple reds. And then you had that outline of white um, around the lip. And then you didn't have much cylindrical shape of around the mouth. So I, m I managed to get that. Everything that we did here, we did here. So you can see it's different types of lips, but they all work the exact same way, which is the, this, these fundamentals. Preserve the cylinder and you end up getting a more believable mouth, a more believable set of lips for your drawings, for your portraits, or whatever you might use them for. Okay, thank you everyone for watching. If you guys want to get your work critiqued, please go to istabrak.com and go to the subreddit icon right here. If you learned something today and want to give back, please, please, please consider joining as a patron. It's just one dollar a month. Um, and soon Portrait Studio will be on sale along with everything else on my store, including my masterclass. Uh, thank you guys for coming and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.